good morning and welcome to worship here at Leamington Presbyterian Church. We are delighted that God has brought you to this place. Those of you worshiping with us um, here in person as well as those who are joining us online today. A special warm welcome to any visitors in our midst. I have several announcements. First, I want to walk through a few changes in our bulletin. We have increased the font size. I'm not going to say who, but some people had mentioned it was getting hard to read. We all know that the reading glasses and the masks are, get fogged up. It's hard. So um, we have increased the font size, which also means we have removed the scripture printed in the bulletin. But do not fear. I will tell you what page to find it on in the Pew Bibles. And those of you at home, you can either Google it or find a Bible. Uh, we typically read from the New Revised Standard Version, but you can follow along in any version you have at home. I want to reiterate our COVID procedures just in light of the Delta variant and the pandemic that has not fully gone away. Um, we do ask if you are not vaccinated to please wear a mask while you're in the church building. Um, what else do I have to say? Uh, well, I want to thank our volunteers today, John and Laurel for greeting, Diane for setting up coffee hour, and Bisham, which I'm never thinking Bisham, who is um, responsible for making sure that we are always online and well um, videographed and everything. So we thank you so much, Bisham, for all of your faithfulness in keeping us updated technologically. Um, if you um, would like to help be a greeter or a liturgist or set up coffee hour, we have changed a little bit of our sign up. So we're no longer doing that on Sign Up Genius, but we do ask that you sign up either on the pieces of paper in the hallway. I see a little cheer about that. There's been some confusion. Um, there's some pieces of paper in the hallway, one for liturgist, one for a greeter, one for coffee hour. Um, also a great place for you to sign up to bring something to our kickoff picnic, um, weather permitting, September 12th. We would be doing that outside. Um, the church will provide items from the grill, but we do ask for you to bring a side so you can let us know what you're bringing on the paper after worship, or um, you can email the church office if you would like to sign up to be a greeter, liturgist, or serve at coffee hour. Um, so thank you for your participation in that. Um, next week we will celebrate communion. As we partake of the bread of life, we think of those who go without bread. And so you have a list in your bulletin of the most needed items at the food bank. We will be collecting groceries next week um, and taking them to the Somerset County Food Bank. So please think of that as you do your grocery shopping this week. And in light of dividing sorrows as a community, I am sad to announce the death of Elsie Amen. That's Melissa's mother. She was a member at Zion Lutheran in Oldwick, but as a member of our larger community, we grieve with her family um, that loss. So we will keep Melissa and her brother in our prayers. At this point, I invite you to stand as you are able and um, join in me in the responsive call to worship from Psalm 45. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. You have anointed us with the oil of gladness. Let us worship, honor, and adore the Lord our God.
above God? What loyalties loom larger than our life of faith? Let us examine our hearts, name our idols, and confess our sins to God as we pray together the prayer of confession. God of grace and truth, we confess that we have lived like lost sheep, showing bitterness and anger instead of mercy and love. We have withheld the truth, we have clung to control, and we have failed to let your light shine through us. Forgive us and restore us to new life, that we would re-enter your fold as a renewed people, ready to live to your glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We continue in a time of silent and personal confession. Amen. In body and soul, in life and in death, our salvation lies in the faith and the hope that we are not our own, but we belong to a faithful Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. In Christ we are forgiven, we are freed from sin, and we are given permission to begin again. Friends, let us celebrate this glorious news. Thanks be to God. Amen. And as the forgiven and freed children of God, now is a time when we reconcile with our neighbors and we joyfully pass the peace with one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. You may be seated. Will you join me in prayer? Open us to your life-giving word, holy God. Help us set aside all that confuses the clarity that you alone bring. Focus our attention on the word read and proclaimed, so we might hear and know your truth. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson of scripture comes from the New Testament this morning, the Gospel according to St. Mark. If you notice in the Pew Bibles and you want to read along, the numbers start over in the New Testament. So in the second section of the Bible, you can look for number 42, page number 42, the beginning of Mark chapter 7, various verses 1 through 8, 14 through 15, and 21 through 23. Listen now for God's word to you this day. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then Jesus called the crowd again 
and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is written from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of James in the New Testament, page 229 in the Pew Bibles, if you would like to read along. James chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness. And welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless, religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Delia and Phyllis were elderly twins. They had been raised as children of the Great Depression. They had been instilled how to conserve household items. <laughs> They had learned to live with what they had with appreciation for having enough. They both grew up and got married. Delia had children, Phyllis did not. 50 years or so passed and they were both widowed. The sisters moved in together to keep one another company in their later years. Being twins, they still had fun celebrating their birthday. They would decorate the house as they did long ago for Delia's children with streamers and banners, the occasional balloon. After dinner, they enjoyed cake and exchanged presents. One year when Phyllis unwrapped Delia's present, she burst into giggles. You see, it was a lovely silk scarf. It was floral with beautiful colors, just like Phyllis enjoys wearing. In fact, she liked it so much that she had picked it out for her sister about 30 years ago on her trip to France. Phyllis knew Delia's memory was slipping and she didn't want to hurt her feelings. Yet with a little sisterly nudge, she quipped, This scarf is magnificent. I couldn't have picked out better myself since I did pick it out for you 30 years ago. And Delia began laughing as well. She knew she'd found that scarf in the back of her closet, but she hadn't remembered where it had come from. Being caught in the act of re-gifting can bring us a little embarrassment. We like to think of ourselves as such generous people that we'd get something from scratch every time, and we mean well. Judging from the donations we receive from Basket Day, many of us feel we just have too much stuff and we're happy to get rid of, I mean, give away those items. Yet when it comes to giving something to someone, 
Why do we feel the need to pretend as if it doesn't come from something we have already received? The truth is we only give from that which we have received. Our scripture today causes us to consider the origin of our true gifts, the true origin of our gifts. It reminds us that we can't exactly take credit for much. Our creator God is the only one who is the OG, the original giver. According to James, every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above. We may think using our own money to purchase something is noble, but is it really our money? Whether money has been inherited or gifted, stolen or honestly earned, it can always be traced back to someone before us. Even when we work hard at a job or invest well, our upbringing, education, opportunities and abilities contribute to our wealth. Others have provided for us in ways that have helped us to have something to give. Nothing we have comes from our own doing alone. To believe in God as creator, redeemer, and sustainer is to accept life as one big gift. It's quite humbling to recognize we come into this world as recipients. Even people who don't believe in God have to admit they're products of society and family. We may want to build ourselves up and pull up our bootstraps, but if we fail to recognize the gifts we've received, then we remain stained by the world. As we heard in Mark, we are defiled by what comes from within. We've heard James write about religion as keeping unstained or undefiled. Yet as Christians, we first recognize how the stain has already been removed. The gift of forgiveness. The gift of being made new and given another chance to live with God. That's transformative. That gift only one man could earn for our behalf, and Jesus Christ gave it to us when we least deserved it. The alternative to acknowledging that gift is to be stained with the belief that we can earn everything on our own. But that's counter to the gospel. It's not just about possessions. We're also instructed to be good stewards of land which none of us made by ourselves. Most of creation was here before we were born and we'd hope to leave something for our grandchildren long after we're gone. To delight in God's good earth and perfect gifts is not to cling to them as if they are running out. Instead, we live into generosity, realizing that we have received so that we have something to give. It's not about claiming our human creations and earnings and purchases. It's about re-gifting what God wants us to share with others. Faith, hope, grace, money, and the occasional scarf. James writes, be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. These verses follow his idea of generous giving. He makes it simple for us, really. Believe God is the ultimate giver and then do something about it. We don't just receive the truth. We don't just hear the truth. We share it. We don't collect and hoard God's gifts for ourselves. But as an act of faith, we respond to our gifts with generous works. Becoming doers of the word starts with our ability to honor the true giver. While God appreciates our thanksgiving and our worship, gratitude and praise are just the start. According to the ways of Jesus Christ, God yearns for us to delight in our gifts and use them to benefit the rest of the world 
which God so loves. There's a sweet children's song. I first heard it from my nieces years ago, and then my daughter learned it when she was in preschool. Every now and then it pops into my head. It's a little ditty about life. One of the stanzas goes like this. Love is something. If you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something. If you give it away, you end up having more. If we re-gift love, we lose nothing and gain everything. In the process of re-gifting love, we give of ourselves from the deepest wellspring of our heart where God dwells. We share God's love and not only end up having more, but as James says, we become doers of the word who act and we will be blessed by our doing. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as you are able. And together let us affirm the faith of the Christian church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And now let us gather our hearts and minds together in prayer. Eternal God, as summer comes to its last few weeks, we find ourselves feeling anxious about the days ahead. College kids are leaving home, students returning to school, and the Delta variant looms. We are unsure of the challenges in our future, and we are weary from a rocky year and a half. Have we learned enough, renewed ourselves enough to begin again? Gracious and patient God, bear with us in our fear and uncertainty. Calm our pinched nerves with the Spirit's deep breath of peace. Guide and direct us with your wisdom. As we pour ourselves out to you in prayer, hear and receive us, holy God. We come as we are. We praise you for the gifts with which you bless us each day. Gifts of renewal, gifts of unexpected grace, and intentional practice. We thank you for travel and visits with family and friends, for times we could be outside and enjoy the company of others, for moments of fun and entertainment, for times of prayer and reflection. Merciful God, strengthen us that we might lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing. We are distraught by the news each day. We trust you to make all things new. And so we offer prayers for the renewal of our world and the healing of its wounds. Especially we pray for the sick, the breakthrough infections, the medical personnel under mounting pressures. We pray for children who cannot get vaccinated, yet must return to school. 
for all people who work in schools and other institutions where they are exposed. May this fall be better than the last, that a return to a routine might be possible for children to learn and grow. When we consider your fractured world, O oh God, we lift up to those suffering in Haiti, trying to seek medical attention and rebuild after a devastating earthquake. We pray for a better way forward for the residents there and for compassion to come flooding in from those in a position to help. We lift up all people in Afghanistan the victims of the bombings this past week, the looming threats of more attacks, and all the families torn apart by the unsettling government takeover. We pray for the women and children, the troops and civilians, and we especially lift up our Christian brothers and sisters who now face a larger danger of persecution. We pray for a special measure of protection to be upon those who hold true to your word, that just as we are able to perform acts in your name safely, all people around the world would be able to love you and their neighbor without fear. May there never be a day when we take our freedom of religion for granted. We lift up people in our own country as we consider the pain and suffering. We pray for those grieving from fresh loss. For those out west watching their land and possessions burn. For those with poor air quality due to smoke for evicted tenants who have been unable to pay rent, for landlords who have been struggling to keep afloat, and for leaders who are trying to serve a divided world. We pray for your guidance and love to guide the major decisions that affect us all. We pray for the people of New Orleans and other places threatened by this latest hurricane and all those who are suffering from flooding, from loss and destruction. Help us to see that we are more connected than we realize and more interdependent than we want to admit, that one day we could come together in harmony for your purposes above any human ones. United as a family of faith, and as the body of Christ, we lift these and all the prayers of our hearts up to you, O oh God. Finally, hear us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the gospel according to Matthew, Jesus says, freely you have received, freely give. Now is our time of offering when we offer our gifts as well as our hearts, trusting that all we have to give from has already been given to us. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, from whom all blessings flow, help us to be thankful for all your gifts. Accept these offerings as tokens of our thanks and praise, and accept our commitment to serve and worship you as our lived response of gratitude. We pray in the name of the greatest gift, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, go out into the world in peace, trusting that you have been given all that you need to serve and to love and to be God's hands and feet in the world. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you and those whom you love wherever they are this day and always. Amen. Thank you.